Hello everyone, I'm back for our science DLP year 3 measurement part 2. So for today we are going to learn about the area of irregular surface. Okay, just for a recap about this topic measurement, you are going to learn two measurements area and volume for area last week we have learned how to measure the area of a regular surface and today you're going to learn how to measure the area of an irregular surface and then you're going to learn about volume okay let's start now I hope you still remember how we measure the area of a regular surface. For example, um, this yellow card, which is 3 centimeters by 2 centimeters. So, what we did last week was we used a red squares. The, these red, red squares are actually 1 centimeter long and 1 centimeter wide. So, it is 1 square centimeter squares okay so remember we arrange these red squares on top of the yellow card so then we counted the red squares and we got six square centimeters for the area of the yellow card but now comes the question what if we have an object that is irregular shaped it has an irregular surface. For example, this cute leaf. So, how are we going to measure its area? So, if we were to use the same red one cent square centimeters, okay, uh, but how are we going to arrange it onto this leaf? Hmm. So that is what we're going to learn today. So now I need you to open your science year 3 textbook, page 83. So now for irregular surface, the best we can do is actually we can only estimate. Okay, We can estimate the area of irregular surfaces. There are various objects around us that have irregular surface areas. Now look at this picture. State the objects that have irregular surfaces in this situation below. So by looking here, you can see it is focused on this girl's hand. And on her hand is a nice starfish. So this starfish has an irregular surface. Alright now. We can estimate the area of an irregular surface by using a 1 cm by 1 cm paper squares or graph paper. Aha! Uh -huh. This is a graph paper. Okay, so today you will be introduced to this graph paper. Um, we usually see the lines of graph papers in blue or sometimes green and I've also seen red so it can come in many colors but usually it's only one color okay so if we measure the squares on the graph paper it is actually one centimeter long and one centimeter wide so graph paper is filled with squares and lines we can use the one centimeter by one centimeter squares on graph paper to estimate the area of an irregular surface. Okay, don't worry about this because we are going to do an activity that really measure the area of an irregular surface in just a minute. Before we do that, let's address this girl's question, shall we? Okay, do you know that measurement is important in our daily lives because it can prevent wastage. Uh -huh. Can you give an example? 
Okay, she is saying um, about measurement, how it is important so that we can prevent wastage. So measurement, as we know, um, like last year when you were in year two, you have learned about measuring length, right? So, and now you are learning about area. So let's, let's think of an example of the importance of correct measurements to prevent wastage. Okay. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. Let's say, for example, your dad wants to buy a carpet, a new carpet for your living room. So if you measure the area of your living room wrongly, your dad might have bought a carpet that is too large or maybe too small and that is wastage right so can you think of other examples I'm sure you can okay so now let's try and do this activity on page 84 of your textbook okay now these two pupils here Kina and Langi they are trying to estimate the surface area of a leaf. So they have a leaf and what they do is they put the leaf on the graph paper and then sketch the shape of the leaf. Just sketch it. It means you trace along the perimeter of the leaf. Okay, And then you remove the leaf and then what you do is, can you see the red ticks or the check marks, the red check marks and also the blue ones? Tick red for each full square and blue for each half square and more than half square. And then what you do is you count all the red and the blue check marks. Okay, so they have done it and they got their answer 15 square centimeters. So this is what we are going to do now, okay? Let's start, okay. So here I have um, an, an enlarged um, graph paper, okay? And I found a leaf here. So the first thing you do is you put the leaf onto the graph paper and make sure it doesn't move. And then what you need to do is you need to trace along the lines outside of the leaf. You need to um, trace the lines really close, as close as possible to the leaf so that you will get um, the estimation, the most accurate estimation. Okay, so just trace it along. All right. Okay, done. Okay, so make sure that your um, graph paper is one centimeter long and one centimeter wide for each square. Okay, all right now. So what you do after that is you need to remove the leaf. Okay. Just remove the leaf and then uh, remember the red check marks you need to put red check marks on this area inside okay that is covered full full square so just put the red check marks there and blue check mark for half or more than half okay can we do it now all right let's start okay the first one you can see it is fully covered here so this is a full square remember as you tick or as you put the check marks you need to count so that you will not miscount if you don't do it from the beginning okay let's do it together one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, aha, uh -huh, not that one, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, yes, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Uh, what about this last one? Mm -mm, it's not full. So, write down here, 48. Okay? Because we have counted, there are 48 full squares. Now, let's put the blue check marks on the squares that is half or more than half covered. Okay? Let's start. 1, 2, 3. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I think that's about it. Yeah? So write it down here and then what we do is we add these two numbers. And we get 67. Okay, is that the final answer? Uh-uh. Don't forget your unit. So the unit for area is square centimeters. Because for this case, we are using the graph paper that is one square centimeters for each box or each square. So we pronounce this small 2 here as square. So we say this square first before the unit. So it is 67 square centimeters. Okay, is that clear? I really hope so. Alright, now, uh -huh. a task for you to do. Firstly, you need to find a graph paper. Okay, a graph paper, but fret not if you don't have one, you can just Google it up. Just um, type in graph paper template or just graph paper and search for the image and then you can just print it out. Or you can also use your maths book paper, but make sure it is from an old book of yours, not your year three maths book or else your maths teacher will be mad at you or me i don't know <laughs> okay now so for your task this week what i want you to do is i want you to measure the area of your da -da 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 your hand okay so what you need to do is you just need to lay your hand flat on that piece of graph paper or your maths book paper and then just like we did before we you just trace along the lines the outside lines of your hand and then remove your hand of course and what you need to do is take your red and blue colored pencils and you just tick tick and count all right so I want to know what is the area of your own hand okay and then let's make a comparison for the whole class whose hand has the largest surface area I think everyone wants to know that okay so that is all from me for this week I really hope you can do your task okay and don't cheat don't use your father's hand <laughs> okay just use your hand and we want to see if you can measure the area the surface area of your hand correctly okay everyone I really hope to see you next week so all the best bye